Now what is up my fellow prod coders, welcome to this video and today we will continue refactoring our application. So we already started in the last video, uh, we already did a couple of things, but there is still some work to be done over here. And one thing I already mentioned in the last uh, video is that you should not provide the implementation of a specific route directly in like the routes uh, directory. So it doesn't make sense to specify the route and then immediately provide the implementation. So for that, um, what I will do is I will just create a new directory and I will call it controller. So if you're familiar with other web frameworks and you know that uh, a controller is the thing that basically receives the request and that handles the request as well. And like so we get a separation of concerns because then we just say, okay, here is like the route and some controller is going to handle it. And inside of this uh, directory, we don't care like what specifically is done in service, but we only care about the endpoints we have available. So to do that, um, let's create a new file and let's call it uh, auth.js. And inside here, what we want to do is we want to put uh, this logic. Okay, so let's just cut this. Uh, let's go inside our file. And uh, yeah, let's just say, function login uh, next here and then we can just paste this and we need to remove that stuff here because we don't need it anymore we already are in a function body so that looks a little bit better uh, we still need to export it now what I always do is I do something like this, right? Or you can just say login uh, because you will probably have uh, multiple routes or multiple uh, endpoints in one controller. Now for the sake of this tutorial, we won't. So that's why it's not that important to do it like this, but I just prefer um, this style. And now if we go back to our uh, routes, file we can just say const auth controller equals require and then we need to import it and then afterwards we can just say auth controller dot login nice right that looks much cleaner so if another person looks at the code they will know oh okay there's like a login route and there's a controller and this controller will handle the route. Will like this controller contains all the logic and okay, we also have a couple of other routes here. That's much easier to understand. Okay, um, let's also do this for this profile endpoint. So in that case, it's not really worth it, but in a real world uh, application, if you run in prod, you have more routes. So that's why I will just do it anyway um, let's create a new file, let's call it profile.js and inside profile.js we will just say function profile request response. We will export this. Uh, remember I used this, I export an object here, not just the function itself. And then we can just uh, copy this and put it inside here. Okay, uh, let's replace our arrow function here with our controller. So we can say const profile controller equals require controller and then profile. And by the way, of course, if you are in a real world application, you have m like much more files inside this uh, routes directory. Right, you can also compose routers. That's like yet another topic. So we don't need this at the moment because we only have two endpoints. But if you have over 100 endpoints, then it might make a lot of sense to compose them as well. So of course, 
once this file gets too big, then uh, you should also consider refactoring it. But since we only have two endpoints, it's fine, I would say. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, now, maybe we can make a comment here and we can say um, all routes that are uh, that come after after this middleware are protected and can only be accessed if the user is logged in. Okay. That's much, much better, right? Like compare that with the code before. This is much cleaner and much, much easier to understand. Okay. Um, now we have that out of the way. We should clean like our session things up. A little bit hmm so maybe we can start with this uh, let's just put this into a separate file and since this is a middleware uh, we can just put it inside our uh, middleware directory so inside here let's create it and let's say let's call this session JS and inside session JS what we will do is we will just um, copy this okay now I have to be a little bit careful I think we need we need it like this yes okay then we go inside our session then we can say module.exports we paste it inside here and now we need to import a couple of things so first of all we need this uh, session middleware Right, because otherwise we cannot make like this call here. That's the first thing we need. And uh, the next thing we also need um, this Redis store, which if you recall, is just this. Okay, so we call connect Redis and then session. So what this does is it says, okay, look, uh, we want to use Redis and we want to connect it to our session middleware so that Redis is used as our session store. So let's cut this out and let's go to our session uh, file. Let's just paste this in here as well. That looks okay, um, but we still need to import a connect Redis, right? Connect Redis. Okay, so now we have everything. Um, there's just one thing we still need, and this is um, this Redis client. And since the it should be configurable to some extent, like where our Redis instance runs, I would suggest that we put um, this Redis client here into another file, because like so, if we later continue working on it. Um, we can use NVARs for the port, you know, and we can specify the host and it's just a little bit cleaner. So let's uh, maybe create a new folder. Let's call it database. And inside here, um, yeah, how do we want to call it? Just Redis, Redis.js. Yeah, I think Redis.js should be fine. And um, let's just copy this or cut this. And let's just paste this in here. And of course, uh, we need the proper imports. So we can say const redis equals require redis. So now this file is only responsible for uh, the configuration of our redis instance. And the other file like this uh, session middleware is responsible for hooking up our session with our Redis server. Okay, um, I think we still need to export it, right? Because I didn't do it yet. Let's go here and let's say module.exports equals Redis client. And then inside our session uh, JS file, we can say const Redis client equals require it was in database, right? Yes. So that should work. 
and now that we have everything inside like uh, a separate file the only thing left um, is to actually use it in here so let's say const session equals require uh, the middleware we just created session and then we just say app.use sesh session uh, eh? session okay little typo over here and then the nice thing is we can remove all of this and we also don't need this anymore yeah i think that looks much better um let's remove this as well that comment is a little bit misleading <laughs> because now our router contains all our endpoints and yeah i think that's pretty much it look at this this looks much much cleaner right okay so one last test let's go to our postman let's log in did we get a cookie yes it looks good if we make this call this endpoint it still works and if we remove this and we don't have a cookie then we are blocked that's very good great so now we did a lot of different things um, now it looks much much better right our entire file structure looks better um, and i uh, i already see that we are over 11 minutes already so let's just finish the video off uh, thank you very much for watching um, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up and please also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so oh uh, and by the way I put a link in the description down below so if you want to have a say in what we do next uh, please make sure to leave your email address here and then you get a vote and then from time to time I will send an email around and you can decide what I should present next on this channel thank you very much and see you in the next video